Hey folks, my trusty old X52 Pro died some weeks ago and so I started my search for a new HOTAS system. Some of you might be in the same situation, so here's what I found out. I'll show you the different products and point out their advantages and disadvantages. Links to good in-depth reviews of the various devices can be found in the video description. Let's start with an overview of all the in my opinion most relevant HOTAS systems. I won't comment on the CH products because I have no experience at all with them. The X52. The Cytec X52 has been on the market for a long time now. It uses a twistable stick for rudder control. Its looks are quite 80s. The base is rather light but gets the job done because of the stick springs offering only light to medium resistance. The X52 Pro. That's the more expensive brother of the X52. Way better materials, heavier base. Also looks less like a toy. It has a gimbal connector made of metal instead of plastic. Very precise stick for the money. The X56. Cytex Starship Control Behemoth. They cramped every button, head, wheel and stick they could find on the HOTAS. Also has RGB lighting. The t 16000 MFCS. Thrustmaster developed a throttle unit to accompany the T16000 stick. Has twist on the stick and a rudder control on the throttle. Uses the same hall sensors as the Warthog. Warthog HOTAS. High-end full metal HOTAS. Has no twist function on the stick, 3 kg space, replica of the HOTAS used in the A10 Warthog ground attack plane. I checked them all out and here's my compressed resume. If you want the most bang for the buck, get the T16000M FCS. If you've got all the money, get the Warthog and a set of rudder pedals like the Cytec Proflight or their CH counterpart. Here's why in detail. The X52 is a nice stick, but quite dated and offers less functionality. The T16000M is superior in almost every way, and cheaper too. The same applies to the X52 Pro. It features a high build quality, but lacks many other functions the T16000M offers especially regarding space simulations. You gain another axis with the rudder flaps on the throttle. There's also an analog stick for directional thrusters. The flight stick itself is very precise and uses the tracking technology of the three times pricier Warthog. And as the stick is already available for several years now, we can make some conclusions about its durability. Briefly worded, there haven't been major complaints about it ever since its release in 2009. The buttons don't feel as snappy compared to the X52 Pro, but they get the job done and are quite durable. And you can configure the stick to either right or left hand use, which also enables the possibility of a dual stick setup. Side note at the end, there is no two stage trigger which could be important for some of you guys. So why not just buy the X56 then for extended throttle control, more analog sticks, more hats and more buttons. It's priced in between the X52 Pro and the Warthog and features a boatload of control functions. Because of ergonomics and quality issues. The internet is cluttered with complaints about failing buttons, sticky gimbals, defective analog mini sticks, centering problems and throttle resistance issues. Internal electronic failures also seem to happen more often than average. Then there's the stick itself. While the controls on the throttle unit are arranged quite nicely, this doesn't apply to the flight stick. Most people can't reach the upper heads on the top comfortably without loosening the grip on the stick, which defies the purpose of a HOTIS system. But Logitech just bought Cytec, maybe they'll improve quality control and we'll get a well-built X57 later this year. We'll see. What about the Warthog now? The T16000M has one real downside and that's the button placement on the stick's base. You can't reach them without letting go of the stick or using the hand controlling the throttle which again isn't very practical. If you need these extra buttons and switches and the additional axis, for example to control the coolers and prop pitch of a Messerschmitt BF109 einsitziges Jagdflugzeug, then I'd say go all in and buy a Warthog Hotas and some rudder pedals. You'll need them because the stick doesn't twist. Known problems are some issues with the flight stick's gimbal but that's nothing too severe doesn't happen often and can be fixed within an hour and some manual skills. Otherwise its build quality is beyond any doubts. In the end I decided to go with the Warthog because I play all kinds of simulations. If you're just into space stuff, the T16000 is perfect for you. Don't get me wrong, we're complaining on a high level here. 
You can still play IL-2, DCS World and all the other sims with it, just not as perfect as with Warthog. Remember to check out the description below for some links to HOTAS reviews I found to be helpful. I hope I could be helpful in any way. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, force your friends to watch too and see you on the next Magnets and Miracles. Hey folks, my trusty old X52 Pro died some weeks ago and so I started my search for a new HOTAS system. Some of you might be in the same situation, so here's what I found out. I'll show you the different products and point out their advantages and disadvantages. Links to good in-depth reviews of the various devices can be found in the video description. Let's start with an overview of all the in my opinion most relevant HOTAS systems. I won't comment